On this episode of Metal America, we're at Ark and Flame Center in Rochester, New York, and we're going to be talking with Mike Kripnicki about what it takes to open up a welding school. I'm Stephanie Hoffman, and I've been in the welding industry for more than 20 years, working as a welder, fabricator, instructor, and now with the American Welding Society. where I get to travel the country meeting people who are building incredible things while introducing the next generation to careers in welding and metal fabrication. Hey, hey Stephanie! Mike. How's it going? It's going great, Good to see how you. are you? Good to see you. Welcome to the Ark and Flame Thanks Center. Thanks for having me. Let's have a look around. Yeah, let's do it. Steph, come on in here. I want to show you our conference room and kind of where it all began. Okay. So, as I mentioned to you earlier, the Ark and Flame Center will be celebrating its 10th anniversary in January. It started here at Mahaney Welding Supply back in 2001 when we built this facility. I felt the community needed welding training different than what we've seen before. that could come in and take a Saturday workshop, come in and, and do a, a date night, or if a company needed specialized training. I just wanted to be very versatile and really make this place a destination and change the image of welding and make yeah. more people interested in yeah. it. This was our classroom. Uh, we could put 12 people in here. My first class had two people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so two people, and now today you're doing what kind of numbers? Well, typically 16 in the morning, 16 in the afternoon, 16 in the evening, and that's, you know, Monday through Friday, and then we do Saturday and Sunday things as well, too. That's incredible. So Two people to 16 people three times a day, seven days a week. That's, that's pretty inspiring. Now, I really want to see where your first actual welding lab was. Let's go. So Stephanie, come on in here. This was the room where we, the magic began. Oh wow. This is 1,200 square feet. Um, and I, when I designed the building back in 2000, I wanted it to be, you know, really set off a good image mm -hmm. of the welding industry. Originally, I, I had some pretty small expectations. I yeah. only had it wired, you know, for five different sets of welders in here. And within a few short years, we were up to 12 stations. 12 stations and 1,200 square feet. We made it work. That's that's intense. That had to have been uh, <laughs> pretty hectic in this little tiny area. Some nights you could cut the smoke with a with a knife. I thought. But. Yeah. Let's let's hear a little bit about about how it came to be. How did you you know get the equipment gathered? How did you figure out what you needed to do? Sure. So my family was in the welding supply business, and although some people thought it was risky to do something like this. I thought at the time it was more risky to not do anything. Mm -hmm. the economy in Rochester was suffering, Eastman Kodak was starting to unravel and this and that, and I needed to do something new for the welding supply business to try and attract more customers. Plus I just had this vision that Rochester needed a space for people to come and learn and weld. Um, I just knew, you know, from working in the welding supply business, I'd take phone calls. Yeah. You know, we want to learn to weld, where can where we learn can to weld? And I didn't really have a good answer for them. Mm -hmm. You know, and I wanted to make classes available for you know, all budgets and all, both financial and time. Did you ever think that like, oh, I'm gonna need bigger space than this eventually? Were you like, oh no, this is gonna be plenty? I really thought this was gonna be plenty. Mm -hmm. And my, my plan B was, ah, you know what, if the welding training thing doesn't work out, we've just got more warehouse space for the welding oh supply business. <laughs> <laughs> so I always make sure I yeah. got a plan B. All right, yeah. So um, so there you go. If your welding business doesn't start, you, you've got a welding, you know, warehouse. <laughs> so you were asking me if I ever thought I was going to need more space for the school. Yeah. And I said no. 
but I did think I would need more room for the welding supply company, so I had an extra land purchase. I just used it to build a bigger school, not oh, a bigger okay. welding supply company. Okay. So as we walk through the warehouse, it'll lead us right into the Eric and Flame Center. Oh, all right. Mike tells me you're the guy with all the numbers, all the knowledge here on the Ark and Flame Center. So how long have you been here? I've been here for almost 10 years, since oh 2012. God. That's incredible. So you've really seen the transformation of over the last decade, basically. Yeah, it's been awesome to see. I mean, we've had over 16,000 students come and take classes here. 16,000 students coming to Rochester, New York to take classes of all different you name types it. and so lengths and everything. You got it. Welding, glass, blacksmithing, uh, in formats from a three-hour class to a four-hour date night, two-week-long knife-making courses, and even full-on vocational welder training. AWS representative, I'm really interested to see and kind of hear a little bit about how you guys are using the different offerings from the American Welding Society here at the school. Absolutely. I'm actually a past chairman myself for the Rochester section, oh, wow. and as a facility at Ark and Flame, we try and collaborate with the local AWS chapters, uh, Rochester, Syracuse, and Buffalo for field trips, oh, cool. joint meetings, guest speakers. So they tell me you are the man with all the knowledge when it comes to the education that's going on here at Arc and Flame. So how long have you been a welding instructor for? Uh, I think I first started doing some in about 1994 when I got wow. my full CWI. Somebody failed their first test and uh, then wanted to know why and the next thing I knew I was teaching. As a welding instructor, do you think it's critical to have your CWI or do you think that, you know, a CWI is just a nice to have? I think that it's uh, it's been an added benefit to me over the course of my career. That it's, it's given uh, a little more credence to people understanding, uh, you know, the importance of what's yeah. going on yeah. and how, you know, the people are really counting on the, the things that we do and the things that we're teaching people right. to do to be to specific codes and yeah. correct, right? The comment you made about someone inspiring you earlier when we first met uh, was so true with our students. Yeah. Uh, to have them have somebody who is able to provide these skills, provide an understanding, give them feedback to get them to feel proficient mm -hmm. and be proficient, yeah. and then uh, and then to bring that out into the field and be competent, to feel comfortable, uh, and then to see them succeed. It's just, it's an incredible place to be. It's an incredible thing to be part of. Yeah. And that's what keeps me doing.
so much for your time. Um, you want to show me around a little bit and see what the, what the guys and gals here have going on? Sure, we can do that. Well, Stephanie, what did you think of the Eric and Flame Center? It was fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. I hope a lot of people get to watch this at home and really gain inspiration on ways they can improve their welding schools or their instruction styles. Great having you. Well, see, see you next time, time on Metal America. America.